Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I'm making a fun light up card for the gamer in your life. So I had this idea in my head. I wanted to use the twinkle lights. If you've never used or seen the twinkle lights, they are similar to the easy lights where and they have three lights that are operated by a single battery. But unlike the twinkle lights, they don't all come on at the same time. Instead, they actually blink on and off and they alternate. So that makes them a little bit fun. And that's kind of why they're called twinkle lights. It's almost like stars just kind of twinkling in the sky. But what I thought of was, you know how when you play Pac-Man and you eat one of the large pellets in the corner and it makes it so that you can actually eat the ghosts, but when it comes to uh, close to when your time runs out of being able to eat the ghosts, they start to blink. So that's what I wanted to use these lights for. And I went on a search for a Pac-Man stamp set and lo and behold, I actually found some. So these are from the Sassy Club and there's actually two sets that I used. So the first one is uh, Mrs. Nom and the first one is Ghost Nom. And in Mrs. Nom, it has these pieces that I'm stamping out here in white pigment ink. And that is going to sort of be the structure of my maze. And I stamped it out in white pigment so that I could more easily see where I was stamping in order to kind of line it up. But I'm actually going to white heat emboss right over that. And then also in that same Mrs. Nom scent, there's the, there's the little pellets that you eat um, and that you have to clear in order to finish the level. So I've stamped that again in white pigment, but I'm actually not going to white heat, heat emboss that just because I feel like the white is like very, very strongly white and I want a little bit of, um, of a difference there. So here's a look at that twinkle light that I mentioned and I've got my ghosts that are uh, stamped onto vellum to give them that sort of transparent look. I have identified where I want to um, put my battery holder and the uh, button to turn the lights on and I'm going to use the trap door die that you can get as part of the Pear Blossom Press uh, stamp and die set where you have all of the action words and then you have a couple of dies this being one of them and then several dies with different size candles. The trap door is kind of cool because it, it makes a little bit of a peekaboo door here and the idea is that you can open this from the inside of the card and the battery then drops down uh, you attach the battery to that door and that way if it's a card that people like absolutely fall in love with and they use it a ton and still want to keep using it after the battery has drained out then they can actually swap the battery out and replace it for a new one. You could also um, leave the battery out, maybe tape it to the inside of the card, and then leave like a little instruction to pull down the trap door and then slip the battery in. That way you don't have to keep your battery in the holder because it does make a full circuit and so it'll drain slowly, but it'll drain. And also when you go to ship it, it might be that it's at the bottom of a stack of mail. And so maybe the button stays depressed the whole time through in transit and that could drain the battery as well. So the trap door is just a really cool idea. And um, if you for also, if you uh, sell cards, you could leave yourself a little trapdoor like this so that you can make boatloads of light up cards 
a year in advance, for example, and take all of the cards to a swap or um, a craft fair and, you know, just pop the battery in as you're selling those cards. So I just think that it's a really great way of um, just making sure that the battery isn't trapped inside there. And so what I'm going to do, I, I have a lot of these ghosts because they're in the ghost nom set. There's actually four different ghosts. And so I've got ones that I cut rather closely around so that I can use them for placement. And then I have one that I've stamped and cut out of white cardstock, but I fussy cut right on the black line. And so I use the vellum ones to sort of do a little bit of a, um, a dry run or a little bit of an audition of where I wanted to place my ghost. And when I had it situated where I wanted, I used the white one that I fussy cut on the line to trace around onto my panel here. And then I'm going to use a craft knife to actually cut. Now I'm cutting just right inside the line because uh, when you trace around something, obviously you it's a little bit larger than your whatever it is you're tracing. So that's why I cut a little bit inside the line. That way, when I have the uh, ghost vellum layer attached behind this panel, you won't see any gaps outside the black line of the ghost. So that's so that the ghost looks a little bit transparent and so that it's visible, but also so that enough light comes through to where when the light starts blinking, you can actually see a fair amount of that light. And so I'm just going to go around fussy cutting or, you know, cutting through my card panel, which was, I have to admit, a little bit, I had to work myself up to this point because after <laughs> stamping out the maze and heat embossing and all of that, I really did not want to mess up at this point. <laughs> but it all worked out fine. It, it looked fine. I did do a little bit of a, of a, um, like a little bit of a prototype just to see how this would look, the effect of it. And I uh, just did a little bit on some scrap black cardstock and it looked okay. So definitely if you, if you have any reservations about how something's going to look, maybe prototype it a little bit off to the side. And then um, when it's looking the way that you want, then uh, you you can apply that technique to your final card. Because uh, I tried a couple of different things. I tried just maybe punching out a small hole, but that didn't really leave let enough light come through. I really wanted the whole ghost to light up. So now that I have my three openings, I'm just going to um, adhere my vellum ghost behind this panel and that way I can you don't have to worry about you know hiding the glue or anything it's really easy to glue down I'm using a dotty tape runner because that can work itself around all of those curvy edges and um you can see once you burnish, and I would definitely recommend burnishing um, this in, you can see all of those little glue dots on the vellum. And so it's really uh, a very fun little technique. And this way the card still looks really, um, you can still see the ghosts. And even when the, even when the lights aren't on, but then when the lights are on, it kind of creates a, a really fun effect. Now, I was so excited to see the ghost <laughs> on this card that I forgot to put like a little pencil dot through the aperture openings. So I would recommend before you glue your, your ghost on, while the apertures are still open, just put a little pencil mark through them so that you know where where to put your lights. Uh, it's easy enough to to kind of guesstimate in this case because the the opening is so large. So I just need to get it sort of close and um and it should be fine. And with the world's best um foam tape because it's double thick, I'm not too worried about the the um the wiring 
being visible behind the vellum because it's thick enough to where it's not it's not super noticeable uh, because the vellum is far enough away. But I am trying to actually position the tape um, where I taped this down so that it does lay really flat and really close to the card base. And I did move the one um, set of wires so that it's a little bit less noticeable. But you might still see a little bit of it, but I don't think that it detracts too much. And the last thing to do will be to line my card base with some of the world's best foam tape, which I really have come to love. It's my favorite tape because it's the perfect thickness for the battery and battery holder. It, the liner is so easy to peel off. And most importantly, it has a beautiful property that's very unique where it is repositionable for the first, say, half hour or so. So if you've put it down and it's maybe um, not exactly in the right spot, you can still lift it up and not tear your panel that you've worked so hard to create. Um, but after 24 hours, it's going to be completely cured and nice and permanent. Now I'm putting some foam here and there just to support my panel so that I don't have too many saggy areas. But one thing to keep in mind, don't don't glue down your wires because when you open that trap door, you want the wires to you want enough slack in the wires to still be able to um, open through that trap door. So be careful not to not to glue your wires down. I put some foam there, but I actually didn't release the liner on top of it. So the foam is there just so that there's support behind Pac-Man and he doesn't get kind of caved in, but it's actually not sticking to my top panel. Uh, the wires are, are on top of it and are free to kind of move when you open that trap door. So here's a look at my final card. There's Pac-Man. He's about to eat that one ghost, which looks very, very scared. Um, and he's right on path to get the cherries as well. <laughs> and then when you push the button, then you can see um, they're about to go solid again to where, <laughs> to where he can't eat the ghosts anymore. So I think it's just really fun. I think gamers are really going to get a kick out of it. And, um, and I do love the sentiment. It's, it reads not old, just classic, which Pac-Man is a classic. I hope you enjoyed my card today and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.